happy girl. Hello, friends, and welcome back to another podcast of Women at the Well Ministries, where we believe that all of us have to come to Jesus like the woman at the well in John chapter 4. Our highest priority is making God real in your life. Whether you are listening in our app, in your favorite podcasting app, or on our website at watwm.org, we invite you to sit down with us as we look to the scriptures to learn more about God and to strengthen your daily walk with Jesus Christ. Living life for Christ, she's a happy girl. In this episode of the Woman at the Well Ministries podcast, join Kim Miller and Erica Close in a conversation as we walk with Jesus. In today's conversation, we share on the topic of developing spiritual habits that lead to a deeper relationship with Christ. Well, thank you all so much for joining us in this podcast. My name is Erica Close, and I'm here with Kim Miller. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us as we start taking a look at some spiritual habits that we can do to develop and grow our relationship with Jesus Christ. We know, according to Revelation 3.20, that he is longing to have a relationship with us because he says he stands at the door and he knocks. And anybody who opens up that door, he will come in and fellowship with. We also know that he says in Jeremiah 33, 3, that if we call unto him, he will answer us. This is a God who is setting ready and willing to hear from us and to commune with us and to fellowship with us. But we need to, one, first delight in him, Mm -hmm. and he'll give us the desires of our heart. But two, we need to be seeking him so that we are in his presence. And there are some things that we need to do in order to seek him first. We must be spiritually in fellowship with him. We must be Christians. Secondly, we must be seeking to allow him to rid sin out of our life. But there are some habits that we need to have in our lives that will help us be closer to the Lord, live as he intends for us to live, and to know him more abundantly. I think one of the things that is important, and you just said that we might know him, the reality is we can know him. You know, the Bible makes it clear that we can know him. Yep. He says, these things I write unto you, little children, that you may know. know. Exactly. And the fact that we can know him, I think is pretty amazing. But the fact that we can know him means that when we know him and we know him personally and we know his character, We then know how we are to live because our goal is to live like him, right? But in order to live like him, we have to know him. But thankfully, he is an accessible God that we can know. And the first thing we want to talk about when we talk about a scriptural habit or a spiritual habit is that we need to have daily fellowship time in the scriptures. And the Lord avails himself to us. He shows us who he is in the scripture. And he tells us in 2 Timothy 2.15 that we are to study to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And that is important that you see. He wants us to know him. That's why we're studying. But we also want to be able to rightly apply the scriptures in the appropriate time, in the appropriate manner, in the way that God has written them. But one thing for sure is if you don't know the promises of God, you can't be claiming the promises of God. And from Genesis to Revelations, the greatest love letter ever written was written for me and you that we might have it. And we might understand who God is and we might understand who Christ is and what it means to be in fellowship with him and what it means to be part of the family of God. And when we read the scriptures, we also know that in John 1, I believe it's verse 14, he tells us that the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So as we read the scripture, 
We are in the presence of God, and we are learning with Jesus right there at that moment. And it's important that you understand that the Word of God isn't just a book of a bunch of notions or thou shouldst and thou should not. It is the way of life. It is the book of life. It is our guide map and our road map. For all things, every question you have can be answered in the word of God. But first you must understand and know how to use this amazing love letter as a tool in your life. Secondly, you must learn to apply what he says. That all comes from a working, walking relationship with Jesus Christ. And a working, walking knowledge of his word. Right? When we talk about how we get to know his word, um, we talk about three things. Right, We talk about reading, and we talk about spending time studying, and we talk about memorizing. And I think one of the things that's so important about memorizing is that when the scripture is in us, the Holy Spirit has access to it to bring it out of us. And we are told in John chapter 14 that he will bring remembrance to us. He will bring to remembrance those things that we have need of when we have need of it. And that's the Holy Spirit that Christ put in us when he went away so he'd never be away from us. And we learn in Hebrews 13, 5 that he never leaves us nor forsakes us. But unless we are reading his scriptures, we don't have the ability to fully trust in the promises because we don't know them. And when we don't know the word of God, we don't really understand all that it says about the character of God, like how he would respond. What would he do? What has he instructed us to do in various situations? But it's important that you know that the word of God is fundamental to the Christian life. And I'm not saying you have to be able to spout it out, but you do need to be able to understand what God is asking you to understand. You got to know the, the idea of who Christ is, and you do need to hide his word in your heart. That's what the psalmist David said. And it's important that you understand that that is not just for Bible teachers. That's not just for Bible scholars. That's not just for pastors. It's for every one of us who is a child of God because we will be held to the standard that is revealed in his scriptures, which in turn is revealed in him. I think that, you know, what's important too when we start thinking about how, you know, we understand the scripture, you know, I think it's it's important that we sit down and we spend time in it. And I think when we talk about spending time in it, there's kind of two ways to really spend time in it. We can sit down and we can read. And I think it's really important to sit down and spend time reading, like reading a book, right? Reading through all of Philippians or all of John or all of Ephesians. But I also think then the Lord calls us to to study and to spend some time working through specific scriptures. And that's exactly what he says in 2 Timothy 2.15. I love what I call playing in the scriptures. And uh, we get no credit for this endorsement, but, but to me, the, the greatest Bible uh, that is available to us, uh, especially if you want to play in the scriptures, is the Thompson chain, because it will take a thought, it will take an idea, and it will just trace it all the way through the scriptures. And to me, it's fun to just open up the scripture, your eyes fall down, whatever it is you're reading, let that be something you're just messing around with for the next 30 or 40 minutes or however long God leads you to do that. And then there are those times, maybe you're studying grace. And so you want to really search out the verses and what God and Christ says about grace and how grace is manifested in Jesus. And maybe you want to look at the different examples where grace has been bestowed. And that can be um, a day, a week, a month, a year study. 
but you're really trying to understand all that you can about it. And then maybe perhaps you want to understand Noah. And so you do a study on Noah and you want to see how Noah's life applies to your life and how the promises God has given to Noah are the same kind of promises he gives to his people. But if you're not studying and you're not reading and you're not familiar with the scriptures, you are not following God's command. Because to love him is to know him. To know him is to love him. And the only way you can know him is to read his word. I think we've, we've talked about how we need to get to know God's word and get to know his scripture. And we need to read it. We need to study it. We need to memorize it. Those are all really important spiritual habits. But I think one of the other spiritual habits that we're going to talk about in this um, series of podcasts is that of prayer. Amen. And I, I think that prayer is something that we all need. I think it's something that we can learn. I think it's something that we can practice. But I think what's most important is that prayer is how we talk to God. And prayer is talking. And prayer is listening. And prayer is something that we do alone. Prayer is something that we do with others. There's a lot of aspects to prayer. And there's a lot to, to, to learn when you think about developing the spiritual habit of prayer. And, you know, the reality of it is, is that if you understand that you have a real relationship with Jesus Christ, you understand that you have to talk to him and you have to listen to him. Just like any relationship, if you do all of the talking, you don't know anything about the person you're in a relationship with. And pretty soon that relationship's going to fall apart. Absolutely. Just like any other relationship, if you don't spend any time together, or you don't spend time in the presence of the other, and that's what we do when we're in scripture and in prayer, then you'll see that that relationship weakens and wanes. See, God is always in the same place. He's never leaving or moving, and he's not lost. These people who say, I found God, well, God was never lost. You just found your way to his presence, and his Holy Spirit was no doubt drawing you. But you have to look at this relationship with Jesus the same way you look at a relationship with your best friend or your significant other or a family member that you're close to. That blood of Jesus makes us family, but it will not create a closeness. You have to seek the Lord and allow him to reveal himself to you in your time of prayer and your time of study and your just fellowship with Jesus. I love the um, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Can you read that to us? I think that's one of my favorite passages about prayer. It says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God. What? The peace. What? The peace. What? The peace. Of God, which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. We always do things in threes. <laughs> or at least Kimmy does. But I love that because, you know, so often when we are seeking a relationship with the Lord, we're seeking the peace that he brings. And this verse lets us know that his peace comes through spending time with him, right? Through bringing to him, through not worrying and bringing to him those things that we are concerned about and those things that, that we, we need and those things that we're thankful for. And that's relationship, right? That's relationship. And relationship with Jesus brings peace. And one of the things that you need to rest assured is, is that you will not be rejected by Jesus. Oh, amen. There are people in this world you may have tried to develop a relationship with. You may have done everything within your power to grow close to them. You may have shown them amazing love and they have simply rejected you, turned away from you. But Jesus says, if you call unto me, I will answer you. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, come boldly to the throne of grace that you may find help in time of trouble and time of need. He is asking you to come unto him. He says that you are to deny yourself and take up your cross and daily 
you are doing these two things. You are committing your heart and your mind and your life to Jesus, and he will give you more than you ever sacrifice. You cannot outgive God. And if you come to him in faith believing, and you soak in his word and sit in his presence, you will be transformed, you will be peaceful, you will have a joy that only he can give, and you will not ever be turned away or rejected. I love that. I think that is just so incredibly important that he's never going to leave us. Amen. And he's never going to reject us. And all of these spiritual habits that we're talking about, we're talking about them because those spiritual habits are what gets us to Jesus. If we could want anything what we should want is more of Jesus. Amen. More of Jesus in our life. You know, in uh, Philippians chapter three, Paul talks about pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That pressing toward the mark is pressing towards Jesus, pressing towards getting more and more of Jesus into our hearts and into our lives, making Jesus a priority. Because when that happens, all the rest of the puzzle pieces, everything else, can fall into place, but he's got to be number one. And developing these spiritual habits are what helps us to place him and to see him and to live as if he's number one in our life. Because he is is number one. Well, thank you for joining us in this podcast of Women at the Well Ministries. It is our prayer that you know him personally and that you have given him his rightful place in your heart and life as king of your heart and king of your life. Remember, you are loved. Jesus loves you. Thank you for joining us in today's podcast. You can visit the show notes for quotes from today's podcast and scripture references. We pray today has been a blessing, and we encourage you to reach out to us through our app, our website, or our Facebook page. You can find our app by searching for Woman at the Well Ministries in your app store or through our website at watwm.org. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash watwm. If you visit our website, you'll be able to subscribe to Bible Bits, a daily devotion written by Kim and delivered Monday through Friday by text message. Woman of the Well Ministries is a nonprofit organization dedicated to serving our Heavenly Father, and it is through your loving and generous support that our ministry continues to bless others. To learn how to partner with Woman at the Well Ministries, please visit our website. Thank you to the gospel group Fudge Creek for letting us use their hit song, Happy Girl. We greatly appreciate your prayers. We are praying daily for our listeners. Remember that God loves you. You are loved. Happy girl, she's a happy girl, she's a happy girl, living a life for Christ, she's a happy girl, not that melancholy never comes to plague her soul, she just knows whatever happens, God is. Happy girl.